stories like this from all over the world it's easily stained kind of freaking out what hairdresser is going to want to work with my hair the mistakes i did or look at how my hair looked my hair got burned off at the salon almost 12 weeks ago it was an awful traumatic experience both for me and the hairdresser that made the mistake if you're new around here and you want to know in more detail what happened i'm going to be pinning in the first comment the previous episodes here we are today i did my own roots for the first time super stressful yes i'll be the first to admit definitely far from perfect there's tons of hairdressers out there that would have done it better than me but considering the fact that i was absolutely traumatized and couldn't bring myself to enter a salon still have very huge trust issues when it comes to somebody doing something to my hair i also made mistakes and i want to share those with you as well in case you're going through something similar and also you would not repeat the mistakes i did or you won't be as freaked out if you encountered them and you guys know i had different alternatives i was considering letting my natural hair grow i was also considering just going all brunette so at this point i'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel because i was able to do my roots myself at home without bleach without further damaging my hair for sure there is still some damage and i was also able to remain blonde i've continued to pumper it in different ways i think i still need a good five or six months and i think this is the first time i'm sitting here and i think things will be okay when i was a newlywed i used to dye my hair blonde myself without bleach and it's been a while i've been married for a long time i didn't really remember a lot of what i did and of course my hair back then was super healthy it had not gone through a salon disaster the situation was completely different i'm also older so is my hair but i tried to remember you know if you did it back then maybe you can do it again now so i started doing a little bit of strand testing on the roots and i highly recommend if you're thinking of doing this if you had very extremely damaged hair like is still my case especially on this area strand testing i think helped me build a little bit of confidence a bit of trial and error without compromising my hair as a whole because of course as many of you pointed out color is a lot less damaging than bleach but it's still damaging while i was doing that it was actually one of your comments and the comment said i think i screenshot it so if i can find it i will insert it right here something like you're going to have to make up your mind really soon like if you want to lighten your roots because your root growth is getting you know bigger and bigger and it's only the first few inches that are really the easiest to lighten up and then i remembered that yes when i used to do my own hair color color my roots i used to do that quite frequently like maybe once a month so that the root growth would be really really small so i'm not gonna lie that triggered a lot of anxiety in me thought well maybe i need to try a new hairdresser like what am i going to do i also thought like what hairdresser is going to want to work with my hair and the second thing is i knew exactly what had happened to my hair and all in all i guess if something went wrong this time i wanted to be the person to blame for it okay so let's start with how i protected my hair because i did a bunch of things on the days coming up to doing my color of course i was using k18 after every single wash uh i think i did it for three washes previous to coloring my hair and before that i took a little bit of a break but right after the big salon burn off it was kating that saved my hair and i did do those uh, six consecutive washes so i have been using this for a while on the day that i colored my hair first of all i had the k18 mist professional molecular repair mist what i did was spray this but mostly focusing on the root and the kind of area where an overlap could potentially cause a further break off and of course i made sure that this area which is still quite fragile was particularly saturated with the product so then per the instructions i waited for those four minutes and did nothing to my hair and i proceeded to kind of work on the mix next time i am going to film this 
but can you imagine the level of stress I had? I couldn't possibly be like checking the camera, the lighting and everything that goes with making videos. And if any of you have ever tried to make a YouTube video, you know there's a lot more than what you see. And I needed to make the hair a priority. Like I, I, I just couldn't. So next time, next root touch up, I'm going to be able to film it because hopefully I will be a little bit calmer. So in choosing the right color for my hair, I researched a lot online and I am going to link down below the top three videos that I think really, really helped me so that you can check them out as well. And also, of course, out of gratitude, I didn't end up doing the exact same thing. However, they did provide me with a ton of information that I needed. So anyways, I ended up going for 1021. This brand is a local brand, but you can find High Lift 1021 in other brands, international ones, like Svarkov or Bella. This one's like ruined because somehow ruined the tube. So I did 20 grams of 1021 and 10 grams of 12. This looks disgusting. This is a silver gray, which actually comes out looking a little bit purple. So all in all, those were 30 grams. So then I added double that. So 60 mils of 40 volume developer. This one is the Zvarkov Blonde Me one. And I think everybody knows that you're not supposed to mix bleach with 40 volume developer, but with high lift color, actually the manufacturers recommend you use 40 volume. I like this one by Blonde Me because it has an oil formula that helps retain a little bit of moisture. It's not as drying as other brands. So as I was doing this, K18 was acting on my hair. Then something that's really important that nobody says is that you really need to take your time to mix things. I mean, do it as fast as you can, of course, but when you're mixing different colors, it's really important to mix everything really well together. And I did that in two ways. First of all, I had this cute, um, my brain is looking for this word in English, mixer. I think it's mixer. The other thing is this, cute cocktail shaker where you can also measure in ounces right here or in mils for me for the amount of developer and then of course you put on the lid and shake it like that and you can also use it as a bowl you keep the mix in there so the next thing i did to protect my hair before going in with this mix four minutes had gone by and then i went in with coconut oil virgin cold pressed coconut oil whatever the brand that you can find from where my highlights started down to my ends. I spread a good amount of coconut oil to help protect from overlapping, nourish the hair as I was, you know, putting it through this process. It helped a little bit in something that eventually did cause me a little bit of trouble, but it would have been worse had I not done the coconut oil coating first. And that is that, especially on these two areas, which are over bleached because of what happened at the salon, the hair just takes in dye completely different. I don't want to be ungrateful. I'm really happy with the results, but it's not even, it's not homogeneous. Uh, not as much as I'd like. So because of what my hair went through, it's easily stained. The damaged area is going to soak in a lot more pigment. So with that in mind, I went in and I applied it really carefully to the roots. I actually started at the front. I know a lot of people say you need to start at the back. I started at the front. It was like the most fragile layer. So I really wanted to be able to monitor how things were going as I was applying the color in the rest of the hair. And I really tried my best not to overlap with the highlights in the bleached area. One tip for that is better not to overload the brush, just the tiniest amount. Ideally a thin but kind of wide brush helps you do this slowly, but because it is wide, it's going to take you less time. And of course you keep sectioning, just repeating the process all over. And then, and this really freaked me out. I had to keep reminding myself this is not bleach. This high lift colors, the first few minutes they lift and then it will deposit the color. So you need those extra 20 minutes, which is going to neutralize those undertones as the hair gets lighter and lighter. First red comes out, then orange, and finally yellow. And even though you're freaking out, you need to allow the product to work. Respecting that exposure time is really important. Like I said, I had tried this on a strand test. I did one 
back here on the healthier hair and then I did on the strand that was more let's say compromised before trying this I would have to be extremely unlucky for this to damage my hair because it hadn't on those two strands of course I had a timer on my phone an hour goes by but what I did next is add a little bit of conditioner to the last few grams of the mix that was still on this shaker it was mostly conditioner but I did spread that through the rest of the hair and I left that on honestly maybe two minutes scary part but I knew I needed to do that if I wanted to start working on just making my hair look a little bit more uniform more even color wise of course I put my hair with my head upside down in the bathroom sink with Oplex number four which I don't use every single day but I usually reserve it for this moment when I just had something done to my hair you know it's just a gentler shampoo in my research I also found that it's really important to remove every last residue of the hair dye and like I've been doing lately I used a ton of cold water to rinse the shampoo off my hair at that point I was looking at my hair in the mirror and of course wet hair is kind of deceiving looks completely different than blow-dried it looked a little bit orange it still does but it looked more orange than I had hoped so I started thinking you know maybe I should have added a little bit more of the 12. What I'm going to do to neutralize this is with my hair wet, I went in and mixed number 12 um, with 7 volume developer 2%. Spread that super quickly on the roots, kind of freaking out. And I just left it on for maybe for sure less than 5 minutes. Just keep looking at the roots because you're going to see something changing. And I went in and rinsed that off. And as I was putting the K18 mask. It was then that I noticed everything that was over bleached at the salon and in extremely damaged looked so purple. Like it was bad. I'm going to tell you how I solved this in case you're in a similar situation. But most likely if you're doing a road touch up and you already have bleached hair even if it's not extremely damaged I'm pretty sure this can happen so I'm gonna tell you what I did but before going into fixing that I removed the excess water on my hair with my aqueous turban and I applied the k18 molecular repair mask maybe two pumps I spread it all over my hair I just let it sit and do its thing for four minutes so then thank goodness I had this I went in with this chroma ID beige bonding mask I don't know why it's called beige because honestly it's super gold super intimidating but I'll tell you something it smells amazing and it's a great product for kind of color correcting the hair it's a professional product actually which just happens to be in my hands now I'm professional hands I like mine but it's actually really good for to have at home if you're not a professional because it has 9.5-4 Zvarkov's version of like Oplex that's why it's called a bonding mask it protects the hair while it tones it and it has a very low level um, developer already mixing evenly inside it's great for people who want to maintain kind of the golden locks similar to the 9.5-1 different packaging and shades but it's the same concept so I went in with this and don't be fooled by my face for one second I was freaking out the entire time I was doing this I applied a little bit of this with my hands to the strands that looked a little bit bluish purple fortunately it was just a couple of strands so the color here just washes off after 20 washes if you leave it on for 20 minutes but I left it on for like a minute eventually it's going to wash off and things are going to look a little bit less gold so it's not meant to be permanent so once i washed that off my hair i went in and i know that many of you guys are not going to be able to get these exact products but that's why i talked to you about the product ingredients and characteristics and benefits because i am confident that wherever you are you can find something similar if i explain to you why it's good so if you can get the exact same one by all means do it this is an amazing product First of all, it's huge. I love a good one kilo 
hair mask olio and it's an extra acid hair mask so of course you want that low ph that acidity is going to help seal the hair cuticle after you have done the exact opposite open it up you know with all these products to deposit the color that's why so many people recommend doing a uh, apple cider vinegar rinse it's acid it's super acid this thing is amazing i recommended this to my mom go to a professional store and ask for an extra acid hair mask it's going to improve the hair's um, shine because it is closing that cuticle less like pore and after that I was dying to go blow dry the hair a little bit to see the actual color but I went in with yet another hair mask I've been testing out lately and it's so amazing I think I'm going to use it maybe on a video to show you guys this is the Vela Invigo Nutri and Rich with goji berry this one also contains a few assets it also contains silicones and it's just super rich and just leaves my hair very manageable so anything that helps my hair feel more manageable is going to require less styling and as you guys know that is crucial for me because i'm using the hair dryer but i'm using it mostly in the cold setting and then i just use the warm setting to kind of shape it a little bit on the most damaged section definitely just cold Hair. Afterwards, I use a little bit of Oplex number no. six. I used to use a ton of this, but honestly, a little goes a really long way. And this also really helps me tame those broken strands. And I just blow dry. This is such an underrated hair dryer. It's a professional Italian hair dryer. So underrated because it looks like an ordinary hair dryer. But if you try it, it has that ionic technology that so many like super expensive hair dryers don't have yet. It makes a huge difference when it comes to frizz. It's also very powerful. So this one I used in cold setting warm setting and I applied a drop maybe of the Brioche don't despair repair this one is a clear oil that's why I use it because I don't want anything any other pigments clinging to those areas that I told you guys are more porous and they tend to stain because of what happened to me oh and then and then I looked and well it looked exactly like this reasonably presentable the roots are a little bit more orange than I'd hope. I mean, for sure it's going to be a, a journey both to find the exact formula for me and also I still need to nourish the hair and really pamper it a lot. It gets me back in control. This gives me hope because now I know that I can fix my roots, touch them up at home with no bleach, no hair loss, no hair fried. I'm still blonde. So the last thing I did, and you can see my lovely hair is there, is I went in with this um, Split Ender Pro 2 strand by strand once it was dry of course. As many of you know this snips the ends, it doesn't really take much length so I decided that every time I color my roots I'm going to go in with the Split Ender Pro afterwards to try to get rid of those split ends which helps with length retention and then i did something crazy this whole thing felt very empowering that i had managed to do something and i decided you know what i'm also going to trim a little bit i think you've seen my scissor before it has these teeth so you don't need to kind of do a blunt cut and then at least for me it works i flipped my hair back and i told my husband do you think it's even yeah yeah it's fine so unless he liked mm, he's probably just being nice and i went with my mirror i used that mirror on the back to see things and it looks slightly like this it looks a little bit fuller like you have a little bit more volume so i think that's that that is everything i did like i said next time hopefully i'm going to be in a much better place to be able to film it as i'm doing it these things are all like time sensitive and um, this whole experience was very chaotic i think fixing this would have been a challenge for a hairdresser so you can imagine the level of stress that i went through not knowing a single thing not being an expert it took a little bit of courage because i'm sorry if this was too long but the final thing i want to say because there's a ton of people going through a hair nightmare right now a ton of people whose hair has been ruined uh, at the salon someone had told me 12 weeks ago that my hair was going to look like this i would have suffered so much less so hopefully if you see my hair is recovering and it's 
a lot more decent for sure. Of course, it's not back to where it was, but there are times that I can start forgetting what happened. 12 weeks ago, a professional hairdresser had burnt my hair off and told me it was going to go completely bold, that the rest of the hair she had highlighted was also going to burn off. So as much as this has been a very stressful situation that I wish had I had never gone through, I hope that at least if you are going through something similar, you realize that there's absolutely nothing special about me and I've shared every single thing I've done since this happened to me. So there is hope for your hair as well. And if you're like me and having a certain hair color is something you're used to, I've been blonding my hair for the longest time. Even if it's my natural hair color, it just feels a little bit alien to me after all these years and also how much like time and money and even like damage has already been done to all this hair that has been bleached over the years. And now I'm just gonna go and cover all that up with a color that is not my choice. And that does not guarantee my hair to get healthier either. So I don't know what's going to happen down the line. I probably will be playing out with different like color shades. And if I manage to go from this disaster, completely hopeless to this, which is a lot better for sure in 12 weeks and without needing to change my hair color a lot substantially, then I feel this may be possible for other people watching this as well. So I guess in a nutshell, do not give up hope and also feel free to write to me. I get DM'd about stories like this from all over the world literally every day ever since I uploaded my first video with the disaster. The good news is I'm going to slowly restart the product testing series very soon and a few other things that hopefully will be helpful, which is my main goal here to help you guys. Um, every single product used and mentioned throughout this video, it's going to be listed down below so that you can check them out. And that is the case for all my videos. Let me know if you have any questions. I will catch up with you all again on my next one.